Hi everybody. Hello. Hey, so tonight we are joined by a really amazing guest. Um, her name's uh, Neve, Neve Wimperis, and she runs an embroidery com uh, company called Wimperis Embroidery. And we first saw her on BBC Two, actually. We were watching, um, it was a series called The Victorian House of Arts and Crafts. And it was, um, they got these makers together and they were like kind of making arts and crafts inspired yeah, pieces. They kind of took away all their um, kind of modern machinery they had to make it all using old Victorian styles. Um, so if you're interested in kind of seeing that, I think it's been on TV actually recently, you could probably catch it on an iPlayer, but I, uh, yeah, definitely. It was watching. amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. This, I mean, it's really nice to just watch that whole process of making together and coming up with the ideas and Neve produces really beautiful bedspread, which was contemporary and classic at the same time. It was amazing. So now. Just connecting now. Oh, yeah, just happening. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hey. How's Hi. it going? Good, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, good, thanks. I'm Ali, this is Mark. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> how are you doing today? Are you surviving the heat wave? Oh, it's so hot. London is horrific. Oh, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, you're, you're based in Camden Town. Yeah, Camden Town, like right in the centre of it. So it's surrounded it's by concrete, yeah. ultra hot. Exactly. How about you guys? How are you doing? Yeah, really, really good. good. We're just up the road in Clapton, where it's oh, cool. Clapton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice. It's good. Yeah, I managed to get some part time we, in. We so. turn the fan off so we can hear each other. So <laughs> yeah, I shut the window. Yeah. I think I'm dying. <laughs> So um, maybe for all of our audience listening who don't know who you are, maybe you can just give a brief overview of who you are and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm Neve Wimpress. I am a botanical feminist embroidery artist. Um, been doing it for seven years now, which is alarming. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Goes so fast. Yeah, <laughs> like got a master's degree in it, went on TV doing it. And now I've just launched um, a new part of my business, like during lockdown. So it's yeah, all kind of system over here. Yeah, it's very exciting. And we can talk about that later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah so maybe you can start from the beginning. Like, how did you get into this? And maybe take us back to kind of where you were at school and whether God. you were creative <laughs> at school. Let's settle in with the popcorn guys, right? <laughs> Um, so I come from like a really creative family. So like if you Google my surname, which is Wimpress, everyone that comes up, like they're all artists or musicians or architects. Like it is, it is actually ridiculous. Wow. Um, so, it's in your blood. So I, huh? It's in your blood. It's definitely in my blood. Like there's just no choice. Like, oh, you're a Wimpress, you're an artist. Like that is it. <laughs> So, so do you think that put any like pressure on you to kind of definitely follow a creative route then? I don't, I don't think it did. It just no. naturally happened. Like, you know, like my, my family never sat me down at any point and went, right. Like, You're going to be an artist. Don't even think about being an accountant. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, yeah. So, so obviously like growing up, I mean, growing up around artists as well, you kind of realise what a good idea it is to be an artist and also at the same time what a terrible idea it is like oh, yeah. none of my family like make money you know <laughs> but i i grew up with this uh kind of notion that like what you do was more important than the money like i, I never you know you don't get into art to be a millionaire no. unless you're damien no. hurst um <laughs> yeah, true. you you get into art because like it feeds your soul and it's what you love so yeah, there was no choice, really. <laughs> yeah, it came from within. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> was, was like textiles part of your upbringing then? Were, you, were there members of your family that kind of got you into that? Or did that happen at school or later? Or? No. Oh my God. Like, not at all. Like, I did textiles at GCSEs, which yeah. was more sort of like making clothes. Yeah. I really didn't like it. Like, I dreaded my textiles lessons. Oh. <laughs> did you? Um, yeah. <laughs> and like, my art teacher, when I was doing GCSE art, and I told him that I wanted to go on the art college, like, skip, you know, A levels and just go to art college. And he actually laughed in my face. No way. Um, yeah. That's so, <laughs> so thanks. thanks, Mr. Clark, if you're out there. Like, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the encouragement. Nice little confidence boost is what you need. Yeah, definitely. Oh, it's and terrible. I like, oh, it's really terrible. Yeah, really not cool. Um, kind of ignored them, went on and did it. 
didn't do well really in art college went on to do a photography degree so I did my BA in photography I hated that <laughs> you had all these Three high standards when you were younger of what it should be I guess yeah, it was, I was just sort of trying any route possible. And then when I graduated from my photography degree, uh, I was working in a really awful Chinese buffet restaurant. Um, <laughs> which had, like, was so bad. And it had like huge split shifts. So between like the lunch rush and the dinner rush, there was three hours of nothingness where I just sit in a cafe. And for some reason, my brain just went, I'm going to go to the haberdashery and buy an embroidery hoop. Wow. And, that was, and that was it. And so I'm completely like self-taught. At the beginning, I, d I had no idea. I was using um, like sewing machine thread and trying to stitch with that and being like, this is taking a really long time. <laughs> yeah. It's really thin. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, it just kind of progressed from there. And like, as soon as I started, like it, it was really like at the time coming out of uni, not knowing what the hell to do with your life. I was having really bad panic attacks. I was really anxious just all the time. <laughs> And, and embroidery just like really, really helps that. Like it really wow. steadies your mind. Yeah. So we just kind of stuck with it and, and now we're here. <laughs> That's your therapy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think for a lot of people, they would share that sentiment that their, their creative kind of practice is a way of, it is a way of therapizing. It just kind of takes you out of whatever you're doing, isn't it? So that you're in the moment, I guess, when you're, when you're starting. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And also like, because embroidery, I think it's so, it's similar to knitting in the way that it's like a really repetitive motion. It's a repetitive noise. Like, mm. I think like your heartbeat almost syncs up to it. Like it's, you know, and so it just, it just calms your brain down. It's yeah. brilliant. I recommend it to everyone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you just get into brilliant. the flow of it. Yeah, definitely. So how old were you then when you kind of were at the Chinese restaurant and you picked up the... 21, coming up to 22. Okay. So I just turned 29. So it's, it's, yeah, it's been a while. That's <laughs> yeah, a great journey. So going, going back to like the teenage you, what were you kind of like as a teenager? I mean, if you ask my mum, a complete nightmare, like, <laughs> oh my God, awful. Didn't like, didn't go to my art lectures or anything like, oh, wow. oh rebellious. Not, not good. Yeah. And like, I look back and actually I wasn't that bad. <laughs> I'm sure I wasn't that bad, but, but you know, mum would definitely say different. Well, I think it's a, probably it was really important for her that you did actually attend your art classes, being like a creative person herself. Yeah, probably. <laughs> why, why, why do you think you were rebellious? What, what made you rebellious? What drove you to skip I lecture? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I think, like, I, I, so I come from a place called Stroud in Gloucestershire, which is quite a small town. Like, it's, oh, it's really... Very yeah, yeah. Full of artists. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely nothing to do if you're a teenager. Right. Yeah. There's, you know, like especially back then, it was just so go and sit in the park and drink cheap cider. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Much, yeah. much the same where I grew up. To be fair. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's the same all over. Like yeah. if there's nothing to do, then go to the park. You're gonna drink cheap cider. <laughs> So you had obviously your parents who were um, quite inspiring as like artistic people. Was there anyone else that was sort of guiding you along at that time? At that time, not not really, which is probably the cheap cider where that came yeah. in. Like <laughs> inspiration. <laughs> and like, so my mum, my mum isn't especially artistic. She comes from the side of my family which are very academic. Mm -hmm. So my grandparents from that side are teachers and things. Um, so she sort of instilled the love of like the arts and crafts movement and the pre-Raphaelites into me. So that's where like that kind of side of it came. So like the artistic side and then the academic side sort of collided with my love for like the arts and crafts movement and William Morris. Like, yeah, yeah so that, that sort of that sort of propelled that along, I guess. But. Yeah, because um, I've seen on your Instagram, you're into like reading a lot and you are kind of you seem quite academic from what I've seen yeah yeah so it's it's what I did my master's degree in so I did my MA in contemporary craft and really heavily focused on the arts and crafts movement and like William Morris and John Ruskin's writing um as well as like the therapeutic qualities of craft and like the suffragettes and there was a lot like wow. jammed in <laughs> yeah but I got to, I got to make something in the end, which is cool. So I made a, a blanket fort. So technically, my master's degree is in blanket fort making, which I quite like. Yeah, that's, that's very cool. niche. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
yeah very niche <laughs> and so um where does like your sort of interest in feminism come in was that from when you were youth or is that something that's kind of progressed as you've got older I think it's definitely progressed I think sort of 20s I'm like I, I was on tumblr a lot like I don't know if you guys ever did tumblr but like that sort of really kind of uh gave me the grounding for reading about feminism and kind of you know all of that kind of section of 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 my interests um and just kind of like really opened my eyes and then as soon as you kind of realize that it's there you're just like oh my god it is it you know it's everywhere like it's so deeply entrenched which is why like feminism is still so important like yeah <laughs> yeah yeah definitely yeah um so looking back now what would you tell your younger self have you got any advice yeah, try embroidery quicker. Like, pick that up sooner. <laughs> Give it a go. <laughs> Save you a lot of effort trying to figure out what you love. <laughs> Definitely. So, yeah, so um, just maybe just practice something creative. And yeah, yeah I guess it, embroidery is probably not going to be for everyone. It, it definitely takes a kind of person who's got a lot of patience and... Yeah. Uh, detail. Yeah, it's probably one of the most time-consuming things you can practice, really, isn't it? Yeah, really. <laughs> Where, where like the number think? one thing that people say is like you must have a lot of patience but once you get started like it it just goes so quickly like time just vanishes yeah, yeah. so yeah where, where do you do it do you have a particular place or do you have a studio where you you get in your zen mode no it's everywhere and anywhere so like nice. right now i'm on my bed nice nice <laughs> With my embroidery. <laughs> um, and like the amazing thing about embroidery is it's a really portable craft. Like you mm. don't need any heavy machinery. Like I always, obviously when we were allowed outside, I used to take it with me everywhere. So like, you know, sitting in the pub with friends, I'd be doing my embroidery, like on the tube, embroidery, just yeah. anywhere and everywhere. You can just like shut up the world. Wherever you go. Yeah. yeah. You're a very good ambassador for embroidery. Yeah, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so so going back to like when you started um doing this and thought that maybe you could make a business out of it how did that happen did you just start selling um a few odd pieces or what did you do yeah so I started like quite soon after I sort of found it when I was still really crap to be honest like I started <laughs> selling my work for absolutely nothing like really really cheap cheap prices like five pounds a hoop that would you know take me like four six hours to make yeah. wow you know <laughs> everyone every creative person is guilty of that they just don't see the value in what they've done until later don't you yeah completely definitely it's why i'm such a big advocate for like pricing your work properly now like mm -hmm. i talk about it a lot because i think it's just so important um but yeah just started like i got an etsy and and like wasn't really selling a huge a huge amount like it was enough to like buy a bottle of wine every yeah. now and then yeah the important things in life yeah. yeah um and then sort of just kind of progressed from there like and it wasn't until i launched like the most recent part of my business which is the kits like that i started making money like before that i can't remember the last order i got like it just you know it's really hard mm. and especially when you do start valuing your work properly and you go actually that's 150 pounds and people are seeing like a small hoop or whatever yeah but that's how long unless, it unless, you can do it yeah unless you know what goes into it and unless you know the craft people are just going to be like oh what how much like yeah. so it, it's difficult to strike the balance between like paying yourself properly and like valuing your time, valuing your craft and your talent, and also like getting someone to buy it. Like it's a, <laughs> it's a tightrope. <laughs> and I see as well that you've, you've sort of done some like cards and prints of embroidery, which is like a good way of trying to make it more accessible to people who want to see your work, but they can't afford the real thing. Yeah, definitely. Like, I would definitely recommend doing that if you're if you are a textiles artist of any kind. Like, because you can spend however long you want on one piece, make it amazing, get it photographed, and make it into prints, and then that's like, you know, people can afford that, which yeah. they can't. Something that is now a thousand pounds because you spent so long doing it. You know, definitely. So, yeah. so tell us a bit more about your new subscription boxes because it's really yeah, exciting. It's such a good idea. It's yeah. 
<laughs> I have to give the credit to, so there is an absolutely amazing person called Kat and she is a baker and she does cake subscription boxes, which is genius. Mm -hmm. And like, I, like during lockdown, I kind of had a complete freak out and went, I can't go back to my normal job. I cannot go back to sitting behind a desk. Like I'm a receptionist um, in central London. Mm -hmm. And just, I was just getting so anxious at the thought of having to, you know, get on the tube every day and stuff. Like, so, so I kind of put out on this group called the Indie Roller, which is really brilliant if you're oh, small. I've seen it. Yeah. It's so good. They're brilliant. And I just went, I can't do this anymore. How do I make money? <laughs> <laughs> and, and Kat from Cat Food um, just kind of went, you, you do what I do. You make a subscription box. So like within the space of a month, I had set it up and, and started selling them, which is so stressful. Um, and like, you know, got wholesale orders for all the threads that I need and like everything like that. And, and just tried to make it as, as good as I possibly could, like with the money that I kind of had, like I didn't have any savings. I just poured everything from like last month's paycheck into it basically. Wow. That's brilliant. And kind of went, right, this is going to work or I'm screwed. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. this is it. Um, it's all on red. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, especially during lockdown, like, people are realising that when they're on furlough and stuff, they have time to to learn something new and try something that they've never tried before and things. And I yeah. just think that that's amazing. I think crafts so, has gone up, like, 300% or something. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, obviously the, the virus is awful, but it's given people a chance to see what life could be like if we didn't live under an awful capitalist society. I know, it weren't working yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah, like you can lie in if you need to. So I've, I've got like a chronic illness, I've got arthritis, which like when you get a flare up, it's really difficult to work a normal job. And it's the same with a lot of chronic illnesses and like a lot of kind of bosses, companies, don't understand what it's like so you push yourself through knowing that you're making yourself worse because mm. yeah. what else can you do you know you just like, you have to yeah, yeah. <laughs> so why is it um so bad that you like you struggle to go to work is it because you're in pain yeah you're in pain and like so with with arthritis one of the kind of uh hidden side effects when you're having a flare-up is like really bad fatigue and also brain fog like i've been on the phone to people like clients and I will just, I will not even remember a word, even if I'm looking at it on a computer screen, my brain just will not be able to process how you make that sound, wow. <laughs> basically. Um, with, yeah, which a lot of people don't realise, especially with arthritis. Um, it's not just like achy joints. There's a lot more that kind of goes on with it. So just anything to kind of reduce that, but yeah. <laughs> how does that um, sit in line with your embroidery? I mean, does that, does that end up hurting your hands? It does a bit and the condition has progressed. I've had it for like two and a half years now. The condition has a progress where it's like starting to get into this hand, which is my stitching hand. Oh, no. um, yeah. <laughs> so like found the thing I love, don't know how long I'm going to be able to do it for which is well, you know you've got the kits now so you can just be the person that the ambassador that, for getting more people into yeah <laughs> get somebody else to stitch them yeah. um you just kind of take every day like as much as you can um and like you know kind of be aware that one day you won't be able to do it anymore but that's just you know i just want to produce as much work as i possibly can before i can't basically yeah. well, skills to other people as well because that's a really yeah. nice way of kind of still being able to live through it through other people yeah definitely i yeah i think everyone should do it <laughs> yeah um so what what are you most proud of what's your proudest moment what out of everything <laughs> yeah just on, on your journey through creative journey yeah your creative journey god um i think like the tv show is probably still like something that i hold really dear to my heart like yeah that was amazing yeah, maybe that was tell a... everyone about that yeah it was an amazing yeah. show we absolutely loved it <laughs> oh good <laughs> like a second series i keep thinking oh, when's it going to be on but i know we're pushing for it we're going come on guys people really enjoyed it because <laughs> I mean, we were saying as well there's not really that many programs like it on the tv so when when yeah. we saw it come on we were just like yes this yeah, is our kind of program you don't get to see makers in the element very often and it's quite hard yeah, exactly. to make that filmable in some ways because watching something yeah. make for an hour isn't necessarily, but the format was brilliant. But... Oh, good. <laughs> it was stressful as hell to make, I can tell it, you. Really? 
<laughs> yeah. um, I mean, absolutely like incredible, absolutely amazing experience. But um, obviously like film production, like companies don't probably know what goes into craft. And so they were giving these, you know, us these things with literally a week to make them. So that, that was a lot. So I, I yeah, living as a Victorian, Yes. Yeah. First of all. And that was even when the cameras were off. Like you guys. I don't know if I'm oh, right. lost you. Are you back? Oh, we lost each other. Oh no. Okay. Back? We can see you. Yeah. yeah, yeah we're see back. You. Yeah, you didn't go that time. <laughs> that went really weird. <laughs> yeah, so how authentic was it As, in terms of the Victorian experience? Yeah, you said like after the camera stopped filming, what... what... Yeah, so, so they literally like, they, they took out all the central heating from the house. <laughs> <That's> brilliant. <laughs> you know, so, so even after dark, like we were just there like shivering in bed, kind of <laughs> like piling on blankets. Handles and all. Um, yeah and and you know like even even when the cameras went away we weren't given modern power tools or anything we weren't it was literally like authentic the entire way through wow um so you know like in the first episode when abdullah our cra like our woodworker he was literally given a a log and and made a chair out of it and, and, that, and, yeah. and he worked yeah. all night didn't he he worked all night like that first week we didn't see him he did like he didn't come in to eat or anything it was it was crazy so yeah do you think that was the hardest discipline to kind of master because some of them probably haven't changed as much have they i'm guessing yeah embroidery exactly the same yeah. nothing has changed yeah, with yeah. embroidery so you know apart from like how time consuming it was that mm. that was fine mm. um but you know like having to use like Stephen with his like kick wheel for his pottery yeah. that was that was that quite was intense hard. like I gave it a go yeah. it was really exhausting like constantly like going like this with your foot is, yeah. is a lot <laughs> yeah, did you yeah. have, did you have a go at any other processes that you thought oh maybe I'd like to have a go at this now I'll try something different yeah 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 so so it like things like that were filmed but obviously they had like a week of filming nonstop to condense into an hour. So stuff like that wasn't shown, but we all kind of tried each other's disciplines and yeah. things like for sure. Would you take um, up anything else? Was there anything else that caught your eye? I don't, I don't know. I liked, I liked the metal working, like the casing and repousse and stuff that Bryony did was really good. Yeah. Um, I was terrible at pottery. Like it just collapsed instantly. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. <laughs> what what do you think we can learn from like the arts and craft movement now? Do you think there's something we can still learn from that in the modern age? Yeah, there is definitely. Absolutely. Like William Morris, although he was entitled and rich and you know all of that, like he definitely hit the nail on the head with like you have to love what you do. Like there's there's you know, there is no wealth but life is the John Ruskin quote. And that, you know, literally symbolises there's no point in hoarding money or, you know, trying to gain fame or anything like that. There's nothing more important than what you actually do, yeah. um, which is still really important, but obviously really hard nowadays. Like, you know, rent is so expensive, bill, just everything. Life yeah, yeah. is really expensive. You're, you're forced, you just kind you're of forced have into the system, aren't you? You have to play the game a bit. Yeah, you have, to, you have to be savvy and make money, even though that might not be yeah. the primary reason for it, because otherwise you can't continue what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. I think there needs to be a reboot in the system. Something has gone terribly wrong. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, we should all be happen. artists. <laughs> if, if any time it's going to happen, this is, this is the time now you look for. <laughs> The wheels must be in motion, you know. Yes, Things hopefully. <laughs> so going back to your work, how do you think your work has progressed from when you started out to now? It's a lot better for a start. <laughs> <laughs> it, what, it, um, but think... or conceptually or what? Both, okay. like <laughs> both. <I'll... laughs> if you look back at the early pieces, it's just 
awful. I mean, obviously, I probably thought it was absolutely brilliant. Um, <laughs> but, you know, like, it, it literally, it gets better every single piece that I do. Like, I think if you ever think that you've stopped, like, you've got to the point where you need to, and you kind of go, I don't need to learn anymore, then you're kidding yourself. Like, mm -hmm. you need to constantly be learning. That's that's what being an artist is, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what what would you say has been your biggest struggle along the way? My biggest struggle, oh God. Um, I think imposter syndrome okay. really, really kind of kicked my ass for for a long, long time. Um and I think it wasn't until the second episode of the show that I was on, um, which is when I had to do the bedspread embroidery. Yeah. I spent the entire week really doubting myself. Like I literally cried more times than I can count that week. It was, it was just awful. I was so stressed. I was so in my head. Um, and then like it won like the object of the week. I know. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just thinking, why are you doubting yourself? Yeah. You've obviously come up with a really good idea. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> and kind of literally since that moment, I will literally rewatch that episode if I'm ever if I ever get to the point where I'm like, oh, I'm not very good. Like I will rewatch that and go, I can do it. That's like brilliant. I am good enough. <laughs> Found your inner confidence. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but yeah, it took a long time. It takes a really long time. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I think as well, you know even you coming out with your new subscription boxes and I uh, read your post where you say you were just like really overwhelmed by the amount of people that signed up, you know, that's got to give you a massive confidence boost as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, I think it's like up to 68 subscribers now, which is wow. like mind blowing. Yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. And, and, and I keep going to my partner, like, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's a lot of pressure now. Have you <laughs> in your resignation now? Are you, is this what you're doing? Is this... No, not yet. Okay. I will. Yeah. Got to get a couple, a couple more to kind of like be really secure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also, like, we need to move house. So we like our flat is the tiniest one bed flat you can possibly imagine. So like, <laughs> when it comes to packing up the boxes, like there is just stuff everywhere <laughs> are we looking so at we behind you. you in the lounge or something is it that small yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah like the entire floor gets covered in thread and like oh my god it's awful <laughs> um so we need a place for the spare bedroom to like turn into an office because yeah. like yeah yeah so, so it can grow. basically yeah. i want this so i was gonna thing. kind of ask you what you're gonna do next is that the kind of the next bit of your plan is to kind of grow, grow it a bit in space and like yeah yeah yeah, pretty much. And then just sort of um, once it's like nice and kind of going and I can like plan a couple of months in advance because like right now, so I'm due to ship out on the 7th of 7th of July and I'm still like working away on it, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So like a couple of months in advance would be nice. Yeah. Um, and then I can start kind of making artwork that I really like. I love the subscription boxes, making artwork to be seen as art, which is the next kind of... Mm. Yeah, because a lot of people think of embroidery as still just like a very sort of feminine oh, craft, like yeah. oh, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, and I and I really want it to be seen as art. Like that's really important to me because I I think it is. Mm. Um, so yeah, making making pieces to go into galleries wow. is the next. Mm. Fantastic. Thing. So you're going to be <laughs> embroidering over the top of uh, kind of paintings. What are you gonna What are you gonna be yeah. doing? Yeah, so um, like the thing that I most recently did, I got like a painting from a charity shop, which was um, like of some trees. It's a nice painting. It's okay. It's a bit boring. <laughs> um, and I literally embroidered the words, this is art into it and like colour blended. So it matches the background nearly perfectly. Wow. So from a distance, you can't see it. And then you get up close and you see the stitches. You see all the text. Um, yeah. 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 Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <What's it? laughs> yeah so more of more of that it's on my it's on my instagram um yeah i made it to go into the royal academy summer exhibition and it was rejected so whatever yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's lot. Really, too, too good for the royal academy <laughs> exactly <laughs>
So, so for you, you would say that coronavirus and the lockdown has really like enhanced your business. Um, obviously, you've had time to produce your subscription boxes, but have you had any like negative impact from it as well? Honestly, not really. Like it's it's given me kind of time to rest. Um, it's you know like I've been my boyfriend's on furlough as well. He's a watchmaker, so we've been in the flat together 24 7 since like mid-march it's been you know it's been a lot that, <laughs> it's been that, fine has that, that been good because sometimes that yeah. can be difficult can't it being with the same person we, no. <laughs> we haven't had a single argument i don't understand <laughs> it's been brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um it's you know and and i i've been speaking i think it's made people kind of communicate a lot more to be honest like i've been speaking to my parents more on the phone than i think i ever have mm. you know prior to all of this That's um yeah it's been it's been good yeah. as much as it possibly can be good you know yeah given the circumstances yeah, yeah. yeah. and i think yeah. you know the beginning yeah. first weeks would have been quite anxious for anyone really what like for everyone because it was so unknown but as it sort of progressed yeah. through it it got a bit better, didn't it? Really? Yeah. Hopefully, like a creative yeah. thing will blossom from this, and it will. Yeah. New arts and craft movement will start, and a socialist republic <laughs> will take. That would be rest. so good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, fantastic! Thank you so much for coming on and chatting to us. Thanks for having me. It's been really nice. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and um, for the audience listening, how's best to follow you up? Would it be on social media or to your website? Yeah, I'm horribly addicted to social media. So definitely find me on Instagram. Yeah. Um, I'm just at Wimpress Embroidery. Um, and then my, my website is just wimpress.co.uk. I managed to snaffle that one before any of my relatives yeah, did. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for coming on. I thank wish you, you all the best with everything in the future. It sounds so exciting. Yeah, oh, thank you so much. It's been really lovely. <laughs> Have a nice evening. Thank yeah, you, you too. too. Thanks so much. <laughs> thank you. Bye. And thank you for everyone who tuned into our Creativity Safety Chat show.